Well, I got a new water distiller. Um, the water distiller I had finally broke. It's, uh, I think I paid a hundred something dollars for it. This one was 67 delivered from Amazon. And it's basically the same thing. Um, <laughs> eventually these don't, they don't last forever. Thing is, uh, what happens with them though, a lot of times if you take apart the bottom, well, let me say this, if you run it, you don't want to run it where the water goes completely out of it. You want to fill it up. It's probably best to have a timer on it. The reset switch is supposed to shut it off when it's done, but you want to shut it off probably when there's like a half inch of water left in the tank. Um, it should be starting here pretty soon, I think. I just turned it on about five minutes ago. Once it gets going, it starts, you know, pushing out water pretty quick. Um, the other thing is they give you some cleaner, cleaner crystals with it. You can just use uh, plain white vinegar like this right here and put a little bit of that in the bottom of it, let it sit for a while and then you can scrub out any kind of calcium deposit because calcium deposits on the bottom after they build up that puts a strain on the heating element. The other thing that puts a strain on the heating element is like if you make this gallon of water let the damn thing cool down for a while, like a good hour or so, and then use it. Don't like make a gallon, then make a gallon, then make a gallon. Be sure to burn it out, especially on these cheap ones. Um, usually what burns out first, you notice the wires on the bottom, just if you take off the bottom, um, I forgot where it is, it's in the heating element on the bottom or up there, I think it's on the bottom down there. Um, yeah, it's on the bottom down here. There's wires in here in the heating element. And where they're attached, they can get corroded after a while, even though they're not touching the water, they can get messed up. And you clean them, and you spray some, um, usually I put, like this stuff on it, rust penetrant, so they don't get corroded again, I clean them off really good. Maybe I put a new electrical ends on there, and then put the wires on, and actually extended mine out to, to last longer that way. And then, the reset switch will burn out after a while too. And I think that's just from, uh, you know, make a gallon and make a gallon right after it. That puts a big strain on it. Hope this thing's going to start working here pretty soon. I just got it. I just plugged it in. But it, this was $67 um, delivered. Now, typically you'll get, you might get a few hundred gallons or more out of water out of this before you freaking fry it. Maybe you'll get more out of it. Maybe you get 500 gallons. But considering the water... You might say, well, you're using electricity, too, but you got to drive to the store. So if you use, you, know, you start your car up, I mean, you know, maybe your car gets 30 miles to the gallon, but I'll guarantee you when you drive to the store, even five minutes away, you're probably using a buck's worth of gas. So if you get five gallons of water, even if they got it, the way things are going short right now, and say it's a dollar, say it's even a dollar a gallon, that's six dollars. So... Do you use six dollars worth of electricity over even making, I don't know, 20 gallons it is or 30 gallons? No, no way. No way. So, it's worth it. For $67 delivered, it's a cheap one. It should last a while. Let's see if this thing gets going here, though. You know, I just remembered something. You know, you'd want to fill this up with hot water, not cold water. And it'll get it going a way lot faster. I filled it up with cold water like an idiot. I forgot about that. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to dump this out and uh, do it over again. Well, I decided to wait. This, uh, the water actually has heated up quite a bit from cold water. I was trying to. Th I was thinking, how come this thing isn't starting already? I remembered it starting quicker. And I says, oh, wait a minute. Because if you use really pure hot water in it, you start it out that way. Then it doesn't have that much more to go to boiling. That's another tip too. Now, I got um, five, what is it? A 375, I think it is, gallon water tank in the back there. I got a bunch of water jugs. I got that 50 gallon rain barrel sitting right there, which you can get water off the you know, spout if you had to. But you know, the problem is, um, the water can be contaminated or whatever so you can run it through like you say a regular filter or even a, a towel or something to catch the main debris then put it in here and run this you can run it off that's a, there's a generator right there 
So if you're, you're, you're generating power for the house, you could be distilling water for drinking. The other reason I got this is for my cats. I've um, been realizing filling up the cat bowls is taking a hell of a lot of distilled water, and I use the distilled water for the HHO units, the hydrogen units, where I breathe the hydrogen to make the hydrogen water. And I've been wanting to drink distilled water myself for hydrogen water that I decided, you know, maybe I should get this. Now, if I take care of this unit, it might last, like, a couple of years. I think the other one did last quite a while. I got, I extended the life on it quite a bit. I did fix the reset switch a couple of times. I forget how I fixed it. I think I just cleaned it out and put sprayed some of that um, um, rust release WD-40 stuff on there. I remember I had to replace some of the wires and put new ends on them and stuff. But finally, what happened was some of the stuff up in here, the plastic and stuff up in here, basically got screwed up after a while. It's, it's just not a, it's a cheap unit. And I'm not sure if it pays to get, like this is $67. They got ones that have like a stainless steel body on them. But I'm not sure if, you know, the plastic on the outside is, isn't really... A quality issue in any way or shape or form it just looks nicer if it's stainless steel on the outside it's which on the inside if they used all like heavier gauge wires with stainless steel or like uh, better heavier connector connectors uh, that were had more zinc in them or something that were more rust resistant they used a heavier duty reset switch um, it would probably, you know, last like a gazillion years. But, you know, the ones that are 250 bucks or more, I'm not sure if they're going to last much longer so than this one. So that's a, that's another thing. Yeah, my big flag, and you can see one of them is down there on the bottom uh, because there's a hurricane, or not a hurricane, a tropical storm coming. The flag pole can handle, with the flag up, 90 mile an hour winds. But <laughs> that don't mean the flag's going to hold up. No flag pole will hold up with the flag up there with 90 mile an hour winds. But I got this one back here and I got the other ones up in the front. The ones that are like 16 feet high with a 3 by 5 flag, like I got the, I don't know if you probably can't see them with this camera at night. There's, well, there's one down there by the green light. You can see it on the bottom there, but there's one down there. And there's, uh, probably can't see it. Yeah. You see, yeah, you can see a little bit. Yeah, that right there. I'll leave those up. They won't go because they're smaller. It's cr you know, it's I'm kind of throwing this in in this video, but uh, um, they the little flags are way cheaper to fly. I mean, they don't catch as much wind, so they hold it. And they they're cheaper to replace too, man. As a matter of fact, I got some of those three by five, twelve star forest flags. Well, I got some wholesale. What were they costing me? I think two hundred two dollars and fifty cents each or something. So, <laughs> and actually, I got some more of those eight by twelves up there. They were there. I got a couple more polyester ones, but I think they were sixty-five bucks delivered with shipping or something like that. Pretty damn cheap, man. So, and, and uh, you'll look on my American Survival Channel channel. I got a new banner in it, you know, it has the, I laid it out across this thing. Let's see if this thing gets going here. I'll stop this. I'm just talking. I figure this is going to be get going here soon. Okay, it's finally producing water, so it's working fine. I just got to remember next time to fill it up with really hot water. It'll get going a lot quicker. God, I forgot about that. So, at least that's one way, to, you know, you can really have. The other way is is uh, I have an ozone machine and you use a fish tank bubbler to pump ozonated air through the water and that'll kill germs and also remove all kinds of toxins and stuff it'll make them inert but you really can't go wrong with distilled water another way that you can have distilled water is to have a moonshine still but it's illegal to even to own a moonshine still even a little one in Florida but and even if you're using it for distilled water, it don't matter what your purpose is. Because there used to be so many moonshiners shiners down here, you can't have one of those unless you get some kind of permit. And I ain't getting a permit just to make freaking distilled water, so I'm not going to buy one of those damn things. 
but if I'm up in Tennessee or Georgia, that that's another option because that'll never wear out. You can have you can get a wood fire going and put some water in the distill and get distilled water and you'll have ultra pure water, germ free. And uh, you know it helps when you drink a lot of that, it helps remove a lot of the impurities in your body too. So that's another thing. And it takes out uh, a lot of the toxins and uh, improves your liver and kidney function. And the reason I know that is it works with dogs and cats. You give your dog and cat uh, distilled water to help improve your liver and kidney function or overall health. And you can't really argue against it because you think about it, before there was air pollution and before there was, uh, you know, municipal water, and, you know, okay, of course there was streams and wells and lakes and stuff, but typically what you would do is catch rainwater. And people would drink rainwater. And when the water came down in the form, you know, it's distilled. When the water is distilled, when it gets up in the clouds, it evaporation is a distil distillation process. So when the water comes down, if it's coming through clean air that's not polluted, like what it would have been like hundreds of years ago, it's distilled water. People have been drinking distilled water for thousands and thousands of years. You can't say it's bad for your health. It only takes out, it doesn't take out the organic minerals, it takes out the inorganic minerals. So, and this thing's finally going to fill up. I just got to remember next time, God, I said it a few times, but I forgot. I forgot myself. It's common sense, too. Fill it up with the hottest water you could find first. This way, the heating element doesn't have to bring, use that much doesn't take that much time to bring it up to boiling and it'll go a lot lot quicker and this thing once it gets going as this starts emptying out this starts filling up quicker because there's a lot less water to heat out the bottom so remember all those tips and like I said you want to keep the bottom of this thing clean you want to use vinegar on it you, you know just put some vinegar in it and let it sit a while scrub it out rinse it and just use plain tap water to rinse it out then when you as long as the bottom doesn't have a calcium buildup on the bottom, that'll keep the heating element going. When you do this one time, um, you don't want to make another batch unless you let this thing sit a good hour. You don't want to let it cool down. You want to, in other words, you don't want to overuse that heating element. And you can sometimes repair a lot of the wires and the connectors in there, but eventually these stupid things wear out. But for 67 bucks delivered, hey, it's worth it.